The new Payroll Protection Program, or PPP for short, has processed over 500 billion in forgivable loans since it was first introduced on April 3rd, 2020. The reason it was put into place was to help small businesses of 500 employees or less to survive the COVID-19 pandemic. Businesses have eight weeks from the date that they receive the loan in order to spend 75% of that loan. The risk with that is that if a business loan is not forgiven or only partially forgiven, the amount that was lent or not forgiven must be repaid within two years. At least loans are excluded from gross income for tax purposes. This is good because the amount of your loan is not going to affect you negatively on your taxes. Do take note that employers will still need to pay federal payroll taxes such as Social Security, Medicare and federal income tax out of their own pocket. This can be a pretty substantial amount of money depending on how many employees you have as each payroll will mean more money out of the business owner's pocket. That being said, if this hasn't discouraged you, applying for a PPP loan is extremely simple and can be done through any of the 1,800 participating SBA-approved lenders or participating federally insured depository institutions, federally insured credit unions, and farm credit system institutions. A quick Google search will give you an enormous list of places to quickly and easily apply. Do note that the application deadline for the PPP is accepted till June 30th, 2020. Even though the first round of funding was exhausted, a second round of $175 billion funding has been secured. Once you do apply, the business is put on a sort of waiting list, but from the small business owners that I know, including my day job, loans are approved pretty quickly. The maximum amount the PPP can loan out for each business is 2.5 times the average business's monthly payroll costs, or up to $10 million, whichever is lower. They do mention that employers should exclude from payroll any compensation of 100 k per employee, which makes sense. I kinda wish I was an employee that made 100 k per payroll. Maybe one day I'll be that lucky. So, does your business qualify? Well, a business with less than 500 employees will qualify. This means restaurants or hotel companies with fewer than 500 employees per location, sole proprietors, independent contractors, and gig workers. As you can see, the definition of 500 employees is pretty vague because they will accept larger companies such as restaurants and hotel companies as long as they have less than 500 employees per location. Another thing to take into account is that many employees may actually decide not to come back to their work so fast. The reason is that under the CARES Act, people who qualify for unemployment are getting their unemployment plus $600 a week. This extra benefit started on April 5th, 2020 and will last till July 31st, 2020. After all, we are under a pandemic, which is probably going to last for a long time. Nobody really knows when this will be really over, even if they find a vaccine. Businesses who remain active are probably going to have less business. This means that after the eight weeks help under the PPP, a lot of employees will have their hours reduced. It really comes down to the employee and if he or she thinks that it's more advantageous to get the extra $600 a week till the end of July plus remain active on unemployment which extends all benefits up to 39 weeks or take the risk of going back to a job that may need to reduce hours or even lay off people after the PPP loan has ended. Each individual is going to be in a different situation and it's up to everyone to do what is in their best interest. Unfortunately, there is a pretty negative restriction on the loan that says that all small businesses will be penalized if they do not bring back the same number of workers they had prior to the pandemic. For example, if you had 10 employees but can only bring back 6 due to the lack of work, then the PPP forgiveness request will be reduced to 60% of the total eligible expenses. The pre-pandemic time period that can be used for the number of full-time equivalent employees is either January 1st, 2020 to February 29th, 2020 or February 15th, 2019 to June 30th, 2019. Business owners can choose either time period. Obviously, if you cannot bring back all employees, choosing the period that had a lower number of full-time equivalent employees is going to be an advantage. Also, there may be ways to have the loan fully forgiven if you rehire the same number of employees that were fired by the date of June 30th of this year. I know this is a lot of info to take 
in and I'm really not trying to make people panic too much. I'm just trying to present my train of thought and going through some of the scenarios so that people can truly understand the situation and what the loan entails. It is not free money and therefore needs to be taken with caution. How can the loan be used? Well, the PPP loan is meant to be used for payroll costs, including benefits, interest on mortgage incurred before February 15th, 2020, rent under lease agreement enforced before February 15th, 2020, and utilities for which service began before February 15th, 2020. As you can see, the money is meant to be used to help payments on bills in order to help the company thrive in the future. What counts as payroll costs? Well, they include salary, wages, commissions, or tips, well, capped at 100K a year for each employee, employee benefit, benefits, including costs for vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, payments for the provision of group health care benefits, including insurance premiums, and payment of any retirement benefit, state and local taxes, assessed on compensation. If you're a sole proprietor, business owner, or independent contractor, wages, commissions, income, or net earnings from self-employment are capped at 100K on an annualized basis for each employee. Payroll costs will be covered under the PPP and include parental, family, medical, or sick leave. Now that we know all the rules and restrictions from the PPP loan, it's important to understand how to get forgiveness for the loan. Basically, you submit a request to the lender that serviced you the loan. In that request, you need to include documents that verify the number of full-time equivalent employees and pay rates. Reminder, there is an additional reduction calculation if you bring back workers but reduce their pay from the pre-pandemic time, period by more than 25%. Also, the number of workers must be the same number as pre-pandemic. I know that this part is a bit confusing. This is why I mentioned it multiple times during this video. You will also need to show eligible mortgage, lease, and utility obligations. Not showing adequate documentation may lead to a business not being approved for forgiveness. The forgiveness will be granted within 60 days of submittal. In the eventuality that the loan is not fully forgiven, then repayment of this loan will be calculated on 1% fixed rate over the course of a two-year period. The first six months of the loan will be deferred for six months, but interest will accrue. So technically, you're allowed to pay back the loan earlier than within two years and save money on the 1% interest rate. Small business owners should be very cautious with the PPP dollars they spend and need to make sure that they understand what amounts will be forgiven and what amounts will be nothing more than additional debt on their business. Don't assume that just because you were given a certain loan amount that you can use all of these funds for business expenses. Keep in mind, this isn't the Small Business Protection Program, it's the Paycheck Protection Program. Small businesses who are counting on loan forgiveness should ensure that at least 75% of the loan funds are being spent on payroll costs. They must also realize that if they are unable to bring back the same number of employees from the pre-pandemic time, that the amount eligible for forgiveness will be reduced. In the end, the best advice I can give is that if you do ask for a PPP loan and were approved for too much money, comparatively to how many people you can actually bring back to work full time under self-isolation and quarantine, just do your best to calculate how much money you will actually not be forgiven for and try to repay the loan ASAP. It's nice to have extra money that is repayable within two years at a 1% interest, but usually loan repayments can quickly accrue and could mean more hardship for your business. The world and the future of many businesses are up in the air. Not all companies will see the pre-pandemic level of business for a very long time. For some businesses, the PPP loan will be a lifesaver, but if misused and poorly managed, it could become problematic. A 60-day loan is a very short amount of time. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and got some useful information out of it. As per usual, please be sure to subscribe and smash that like button. You might also want to watch the other videos I did on the CARES Act, artist grants, and pandemic unemployment. If some of you are employers or employees, being informed on what government aids are available to US workers is important in order to survive the pandemic. Well, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.